Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. This is Takedown, brought to you in part by our friends at Adidas Wrestling. As is tradition, we're going to hear from a number of national champs, coaches, and commentators today as part of our final look back at 2017. A week after winning the 28th national title in team history, Darian Cruz joined us Saturday morning on Takedown. The Mountain Hawks Jr. closed the season on a 21-match win streak, earning six falls, 15 bonus point victories, and a 125-pound national championship in St. Louis. After slaying the undefeated top seed in the semis, Cruz scored three takedowns on his way to a 6-3 victory over another Lehigh Valley native, Ethan Lezak. For the 2017 EIWA Wrestler of the Year, Let's listen to Darian Cruz. I would say, you know, the first, the first real, uh, real match, you know, that I kind of felt pressure was honestly the first one. You know, I'm wrestling a two-time All-American who is a, is a stud. You know, he's a, he's a hammer, and you know, but he, but he's kind of having an off season. You know, and 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 I'm trying, and obviously everyone coming in this tournament is trying to win. So you know, I'm, I'm getting, I, I got, I got super nervous for that, and and I felt a little bit of pressure there, you know, because. Um, you know, there's high expectations when you're when you're going to this tournament. But um, if it was if it wasn't the first match, then it was definitely the second match. I mean, uh, the semis match actually. You know, Gilman was uh, a lot. Of, some people loved him, some people hated him. More people probably yeah. hated him for what he had to say. <laughs> did that? Did, yeah. did his did his words motivate you at all, or was he just another opponent in your way? Uh, you know, honestly, you know, it, it's kind of funny actually because it, at weighing, I have to. When you're getting on the scale to weigh in, he jumps on the you have to jump on the scale backwards. So every time he'd weigh in, you know, we'd, we'd be staring at each other, and, and he'd he'd try to get the mean mark going and stuff. But you know, he, he never really said any uh, words to me, you know. But I, you know, I, I did catch wind of some of the stuff he was saying, and you know, he's he's a tough dude, and, and he has to play the part. But um, yeah, other than that, you know, it didn't it didn't really get to me. I, I just I knew. It. I knew I had to stay focused if I really wanted to win, and, and I couldn't let any of the, any of the small things uh, interfere. Another of our featured guests on Saturday, Oklahoma State's 141-pound champ, Dean Heil. The Cowboys Jr. has been nothing short of unstoppable in the postseason, winning three Big 12 championships and his second NCAA crown in 2017. You know, Dean, uh, the team-wise, um, after you know, obviously won the national title, so great for you. But team-wise, you know, what was the taste in your guys' mouth leaving St. Louis? You know, we were obviously unhappy just because, you know, all season long we felt like we had, you know, we had we had a great team. Um, you know, we we wanted to win uh, the national championship. Uh, that's what we came out to do, um, and we didn't we didn't leave with it. So, I mean, we're obviously unhappy, but at the same time, um, you know, we we can be pleased with our performance just just because. Uh, you know, we had a pretty good tournament. Yeah, you did. You know, um, we we scored more points than we did last year, which was a huge. I mean, a lot of people thought we had a great tournament last year, and if you know, we score if we score more points, score more points this year and place third, whereas last year we placed second. I mean, that's not only tell you how how well the other two teams performed. I mean, they they it, it, it was. Uh, I mean, we had eight All Americans, which tied our school's record. Which is, I mean, which we only did, I want to say, once or twice. One, I want to say one other time. I mean, that was a first for Coach Smith, that's for sure. So, I mean, he's got to be happy about that. Um, but, I mean, we got six returning All Americans, so right. uh, we definitely can make a run at it next year. Now, what does it mean to overcome adversity? Well, it's a cliche heard all too often in the world of sports, but a perfect description for the career of Iowa's Corey Clark. After falling just one win short of an NCAA title as both a sophomore and a junior, Clark was again sidelined throughout his final year with a wrist and shoulder injury. The four-time All-American returned to the Hawks lineup in late February and made it all the way to the Big Ten Finals, only to lose there to Nathan Tomasello. It was a last-second escape and a heartbreak. Fast forward two weeks to the NCAA championships, and once again, there was Corey Clark. So what does it mean to overcome adversity? Ask this guy. It didn't matter what obstacle was in front of me. I was going to get that national champion championship, and that's just the way I thought all year. And I, that was a frame of mind that I got away from sometimes, but I always came back to. And that was just... I told my I didn't maybe didn't tell a lot of people but to myself it was 
I have to. There was no there was no way I, I couldn't win that national championship. I don't really know how to explain that, but it just wasn't an option for me and I made I, I made things do with how my body felt and no matter how tired I got, how bad my shoulder hurt, any of those things that could potentially happen, I I was just I came my senior year with no doubt in my mind that I was going to finish my senior year with a national championship. Obviously, I got, you guys can imagine what some of my next goals would be, and those are things that are extraordinary and very difficult to accomplish, but that's, you know, that's how I've lived my whole entire life, chasing down crazy dreams and things that people didn't think you were capable of doing, and just continue to do that. Two of America's freestyle stars are up next. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Casey's General Stores, famous for pizza. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Kyle Snyder has a way of making winning look easy, but this time it wasn't. The Ohio State junior overcame a rib injury to win his second NCAA title, helping guide the Buckeyes to a respectable second-place finish in St. Louis. We talked with the reigning world and Olympic gold medalist about the injury and his timetable to return to the mat. I hurt my rib the first day of the second match, and um, then it wasn't that bad. I fell asleep, and it was no big deal. I... I didn't get a shot for the the quarterfinals, and then I was I was feeling good in that match as well. Not much pain, and then I chose bottom, and uh, that's when I really start to feel felt it. You know, just the weight on top of me and my stomach kind of on on the mat, and him pressing on my rib cage hurt a lot. So then after that, I got a shot for the semifinals. I didn't really feel it at all, and then in the finals, same type of deal. Got a couple shots and. It helps a lot. My rib's still a little bit hurt. I'm still kind of going to let that heal. I won't get back on the mat to practice until it's 100% fully healed. So I'm um, getting closer to that, but still hurts a little bit. And um, I was supposed to wrestle in the Pan American Championship in Brazil May 6th. But with my rib, we'll just see how long it takes for it to heal. And then I'll assess that. But if I don't wrestle on that, then hopefully I can wrestle at Beat the Streets May 18th and then the World Team Trials June 9th and 10th. But I'm not going to be competing at the U.S. Open. An Olympic bronze medalist, musician, and Hodge Trophy finalist, well, there's a million ways to describe Missouri's Jaden Cox. You could even call him the only three-time national champion in school history. The Tiger senior topped Brett Farr in the NCAA Finals and then played him a song about it. Well, he didn't do the second part, but you get the point. Here's a portion of our interview with Jaden Cox. You know, this season, uh, there were some people maybe were questioning um, if you could go back and win another title. 
you, can you uh, touch base on on your season and and looking back at it and, and what uh, what got you over the edge? What 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 got you to the national title this year? Well, I think it was just uh, knowing yourself and believing in your system and your, in myself. Uh, this season, I was just uh, I just been wrestling for a really long time, especially at the start. You know, um, like straight through. Uh, I'm a person. I know other guys are different who can you can just wrestle and wrestle and wrestle. But uh, I'm a guy who needs to step away because it starts to take a toll on, on my body. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say it takes a toll on my mind necessarily because I was always very confident in what I could do. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and I, at the beginning of the season, I was probably wrestling some of the worst matches I ever had. You know, um, I was winning, but, like, they just they just were awful. You know, it was, it was very ugly. And, um, and I you know, I just I took off right after that. You know, I got a little break in me. And, uh, you know, I was putting up bonus points for my team and, and doing it week in and week out. So I was just feeling really good about it. And uh, I had that time to rest and um, and just, you know, get my body to a little time to recuperate from the long, the long seasons that I had. Now, Jaden wasn't the only Tiger on the program Saturday. The NWCA National Coach of the Year, Brian Smith, joined us to talk about the tournament and potential changes to the review process. What are your thoughts on uh, the current current rules and having the officials review their own call and do you feel like it should change yeah i think it it has to because i think when you ask a referee that made the call to look at it it, it's just human nature that you're going to look at your call and say i think i'm right i just think that's you always see when i write a paper and i write you know a couple page paper and i look over it every time i miss mistakes on it because I just kind of read through it and see the way that I wrote it, and I miss those mistakes. Where if I brought another person in, they're going to say, hey, this is, this sentence is wrong, this is wrong. And it's the same thing with a, re- a review. I think we have the technology today that we could have a, a suite or something upstairs where it's brought up there, and there's two or three refs up there with a couple monitors, and they look it over and they send it down, and it takes those refs that are emotionally into the match, and, you know, right there with, coaches on them and yelling at them and people on the stands yelling at them that it just takes it out of that format that it's upstairs in a room and i think it would be better i know it's going to be tough just with the technology but i know we have that he's an arizona state legend he joins us next after the break you're watching takedown brought to you by yellow blue led Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one.
All right, welcome back to Takedown. Our next guest, well-known for a number of reasons, an author, a broadcaster, a motivational speaker, and a national champ. Anthony Robles joins us live for a look back at the NCAA Finals. Anthony, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing well. How you doing? Good. We got to see you uh, in, in St. Louis. You were working hard with ESPN. We were doing the takedown broadcast and hosting the NCAA Fan Fest. Uh, first of all, I've got to ask you, what was your uh, what was your takeaway from from St. Louis and the championships? Man, the the championships were exciting. I mean, every year I walk away just thinking, you know, it's going to be hard to top this year. You know, it's going to be hard to top this finals. But then every year the matches get better and better. I mean, the stories are exciting. Um, so I mean, I had a blast covering them. I was honored to be there, and I think. You know, the fans there really enjoyed it, and it was great for TV coverage, you know. So it was a, a lot of fun, and I think we did a great job in uh, attracting new fans and followers to wrestling. ESPN's approach to coverage is a little different than, say, the Pac-12 or even the Big Ten Network. It seems to lend uh, a little more opportunity to tell stories to the casual fan with interviews, perhaps less play-by-play. -play. Is that the right move, or do you think it'll turn wrestling fans away? Honestly, I think it's the right move because wrestling fans, they're not going to turn away. You know, we love the sport so much. It doesn't matter what, if we're more storyline, if it's more play-by-play, -play, the, the, the Matt Head's going to be there no matter what. You know, and I'm sure we're all in agreements where we want to see the sport grow. And the best way to do that, you know, you have to pull in the, the non-everyday viewers, you know, and they want to hear the storylines. They want to... They want something that that's interesting to follow, you know, and, and, and with the play by play, they want to be able to understand it. You know, so when I'm talking, I try to make it simple to where the non viewer can understand it, but also to the regular wrestling. Like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, so I think ESPN is doing a great job on what they're doing. You know, yeah, it's it's changing from the traditional way that it usually was broadcast. But it's also you can see by the results, you know, the, the, the viewers are going up, the ratings are going up. And that's what we want. You know, we want our sport to grow. We don't want it to, to stay where it's at. You know, and we want to build that, that uh, the following. We want to build uh, the schools that have wrestling and the wrestlers that are competing in this national tournament. And, and I think we're doing that. You know, and I know uh, uh, for a little while, I'm, I, I guess still, some people aren't fans of, you know, shifting the, uh, the lineups of where we start for the finals. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I like it personally. You know, I think it's a buildup. It's exciting to, to just showcase these matches and, you know, what we're leading up to. And, uh, you know, the fans seem to enjoy it. So, uh, you know, you can't please everybody, but, uh, you know, the proof is on paper and the viewers are going up and, and that's what we need to grow the sport. So, you know, I think ESPN's right on. Anthony, it's always good to talk to you. Great job on the what I call an award winning broadcast and great performance by ESPN overall. Nice job by everybody, and uh, we appreciate your review of the NCAAs this year, man. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, my pleasure, Scott. You know, thank you for always supporting me, and thank you for what you're doing and continue to do for wrestling, man. I love you. Virginia Tech has a new head coach. Tony Roby joins us live after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Defense Soap. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. When looking for a quality pizza, you need a place that makes everything from scratch, using fresh ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. And if you can grab a lotto ticket while you're there, well, lucky you. Casey's, famous for pizza. 
Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. Our coverage continues this week in Blacksburg, Virginia, home of the Mighty Hokies and the new head coach of Virginia Tech, Tony Roby. Coach, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great, Scott. How are you doing? Good. It was special on March 21st, just two days ago, when you were promoted officially to the head wrestling coach at Virginia Tech, where you have spent the last, what, 11 years? 11 years, yeah. 11 years, and you finally get that honor to be the man. How will your duties change now that uh, you've removed the interim tag and, and you are officially that guy? The decisions rest on your shoulders. Yeah, I think the job changes. There's really uh, the whole description and what you do on a daily basis. Your responsibilities change. Not to mention, like you said, that you're in charge. You're you got to delegate. You have to manage. So um, it's a role that I'm excited to be in. It's a role that, quite frankly, I was ready for. Uh, being an assistant coach was something that uh, you know, I, I not that I didn't enjoy it, but I, I just felt like I was ready for this role and ready for a new challenge uh, in my career. So. Um, being here the last 11 years, I've learned a lot uh, in terms of, you know, what you have to do and what responsibilities you have to take on as a head coach. And uh, I think I'm ready for him and I'm ready to tackle it. Speaking of work ethic and character, I got to ask you about Ty Walls. Let's go off book here. Ty Walls is a young man I've grown uh, fond of. Uh, I've grown to know him quite well. Uh, fun guy to be around. I like the whole name, uh, the whole family. I've talked to his grandmother, for goodness sakes. Uh, Mima, and <laughs> I just think that that's the kind of guy. I mean, if you're going to go out, you go out the way you go out. That's fine, but there's a there's a bright future for Ty in a lot of different areas. He wants to be an actor. I know that. And uh, how was he? How was he to coach? He was uh, just uh, he. He's a coach's dream. Uh, to be honest with you, he he does. Uh, whatever you ask him to do and more, he, he comes to practice every day with a fantastic attitude. His work ethic is off the charts. Commitment to the sport of wrestling in terms of his diet, his nutrition, uh, the way he lives his life socially. Uh, he left it all out there and, and he did everything in his power to achieve his goal. So at the end of his career, he can look back and feel good about what happened. Hang on a second, Scott. Let me click that phone off. Tony Roby, our guest. He's uh uh, opting to to go silent on his ringtone for his cell phone. Sorry we appreciate that. that. Uh, Tony, I, I must ask you about Joey Dance, too, because uh, if there was a face uh, besides Ty Walls that I would always think about when I thought about Virginia Tech, I'd be thinking about Joey Dance. Yeah, no question. Joey, was a, he's a fan favorite for sure. Uh, had a great career, two-time All-American here, had some unbelievable wins throughout the course of his career. Uh, you know, a guy that was tremendously and is tremendously talented uh, athlete, was a lot of fun to watch uh, wrestle. He was a guy that could do some things athletically that not a lot of people can do. So Joey was a big part of it too, man. He was, he's a Christiansburg guy from Christiansburg High School. So locally here, uh, he's got a huge following and, uh, you know, Joey's a great kid and he's a guy we hope to keep around. We had, a tr uh, and still do, have a tremendous amount of uh, respect. He was part of that all about us, hashtag all about us, uh, when Dresser announced his uh, retirement from the program, uh, you rallied this team uh, in in a way I, I don't think I've ever seen um, done. It was it was very unique in that we're here, we're strong, we're number four in the country. You had a strong NCAA finish based on that emotion, I think, based on talent as well, but sixth place finish at the 2017 championships just a week and a half ago in St. Louis. Can you reflect back on the year? It's been an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, you know, it's been a tough, I think every year is a tough year. I mean, obviously wrestling is a really long season, so you're going to have some ups and downs throughout the course of the season. Uh, we we had way more ups than we did downs for sure, but uh, you, you got to feel good about it looking back. I mean, we lost one dual meet to Missouri, had, had a lot of good dual meet wins. We were uh, the ACC dual meet champions, we were the ACC tournament champions, uh, and like I said, five All-Americans at the NCAA tournament, sixth place finish. So um, 
it's good. I think any coach would tell you, I guess, unless you win the nationals that there's still more to, to achieve. And there's, you're always disappointed for a few of the guys that didn't get done what they wanted to get done. So, um, you know, you get, you kind of leave that tournament, the NCAAs with mixed emotions, but I think looking back on the entire season and what we were able to accomplish as a team and, and how we did it, uh, is certainly something that we feel good about. I appreciate you taking the time to join us today on Takedown in the Nike Hot Seat. I hope you had a good time. Thanks, Scott. Take care. Special thanks to our friends at the NCAA, Missouri, Virginia Tech, and all the great guests who have joined us on the show. Don't forget, you can find us on social media. Look for the breaking wrestling news, interviews, articles, dual previews, and a lot more anytime at TakedownWrestle.com. And so from our home in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week. Have a good one, everybody.